guys, it's Sarah Jane from Malacoco, and today I'm here with Polly from Polly Cafe Creative, where we're going to be talking about how to sell your things on Etsy. Now, Holly has a successful online Etsy store, so she's perfect to answer your questions. I went across to Facebook and asked you some things about what you would like to know, and we have um, those things written down, and we're going to answer those for you today. So first of all, let me introduce you to Holly. Hi, Holly. Hi. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, it's lovely to have you here. Uh, we're excited to get these questions out for everybody, aren't we? Yes, definitely. Um, yeah, so just a little background on me. Like Sarah Jane said, I started an Etsy shop about three years ago. And since then, I've been able to make it my full-time job. It's trans transitioned into its own um, website. So I've actually transitioned off of Etsy, but I was on Etsy for a couple of years and um, I was able to have a lot of success on there. And so, you know, I started offering advice on my blog and YouTube channel for other people who are aspiring Etsy sellers. So I am excited to answer your questions today and hopefully get you guys started with your own shops. Yeah, fabulous. Because I think a lot of people just really don't know where to start or what to do in order to create their Etsy shop. So we'll, we'll get started with these questions and I've got them all here on my phone. Um, the first one is how do you price something that you've crocheted? Okay, so this is a frequently asked question. It's, it's hard to know, especially as a new seller, what your work is worth. And I think a lot of times people struggle just with the confidence to sell their work for what it really is worth and for, for the time that it takes them to create it. Um, it's really important not to undervalue your work. You wanna sell it for a high enough price so that you can, first of all, be able to eventually make a living um, with your Etsy shop and second of all, it's just good for the entire handmade community um, rather than if you undercut your pricing, then the whole handmade community suffers because people who are charging a fair price kind of seem like they're ripping people off. Um, but so the kind of standard formula that, that people go by for selling handmade products is you want to take the number of hours that it takes you to create the product um, multiply that by your hourly rate. So that's where things get a little bit, there's some you know, uh, leeway there with what you wanna charge for your hourly rate. If you're a new seller, you, know, you might have a lower like $8 or so hourly rate. If, you, if the demand increases for your product, you can increase it. Um, but that's how you'll determine the cost of your labor. And then you wanna add that number to the cost of your materials. And that gives you your total cost, so what it costs you to make the product. Um, from there, you wanna multiply that number by two to get your wholesale price, and then multiply your wholesale price by two to get your retail price. So you wanna make sure that you're charging enough that way, you know, if your work was to get featured on a big media site or a, a really popular blog, you want to be able to um, get your money's worth and even you know, hire someone on to help you. So you want to have a lot of leeway. And I think the biggest mistake people make is they don't charge enough for their work. Yeah, definitely. I think some people think, well, you know, somebody could go in and buy a crochet blanket from a store. But they've got to remember that this is handmade. And if people are looking for handmade, then they're prepared to pay those prices, aren't they? That's exactly right. And, you know, that's the other thing. If you don't charge enough for your work, a lot of times it um, is actually affects you negatively because people see it and they go, what's what's wrong with this? Why is it so cheap? You know, and so that keeps people from buying sometimes. Yeah, good. Lovely. So the next question is, how do I get more traffic to my Etsy shop? Yeah, so once you have your shop open, the, the most important thing is getting people to find you, right? So... Um, there are a lot of things that go into that. I think the first thing is you want to have your shop optimized for SEO. So that's really important. Um, Etsy obviously has a search engine in it. And so you want to be sure that you're including keywords um, in your product listings, in your tags, in your announcement of your shop. So um, all of those keywords really affect how you're found in search. And you want to put the keywords in there in a way that someone would be searching for them. So you wanna use phrases that people would search for, not just kind of like random phrases that describe your product. 
Um, and then that's also the case for getting your products to, to show up in Google. So I think SEO, which is the um, optimizing and you know using keywords, that's really important. Um, and then I think the second most important thing is having really great product photography, really clear and bright and um, simple, you know. I think that is the, ne the next most important thing. I think people kind of scroll right over dark photos, photos that are kind of like yellow or, you know, unclear, blurry. So those would be my top two tips for that. Yeah, definitely. You definitely want to have something that's eye-catching that uh, people are drawn to. So question three, um, how do you make your work stand out from the rest? Right, so that kind of goes back to what I just said, but I, I think the product photography is the most important. Um, specifically, I would recommend, you know, taking photos on a plain white background if possible. I just think that makes your product really pop off of the screen. Um, sometimes I think people get backgrounds that are a little bit too complicated or have too much stuff going on, and so your work doesn't really stand out. So I think sometimes people think that we have to have the quality equipment in order to take good um, quality photos and that's not always necessarily true sometimes I take really good photos photos with my with my iPhone um, so it's just all about playing around yes definitely and I think um, I even have a video on my channel about how to take product photography with your iPhone um, but yeah just having like the blank white background and making sure that the photos bright enough um, so like you can increase the brightness on your phone when you edit the edit the picture um, and just making sure it's really like clear I think all of those things are much more important than having like a really expensive you know um, professional camera yeah um, this leads us nicely on to the next question so what is the best way to display um, and photograph your work for sale uh, online sales yeah so um, I have sort of a list of like guidelines of what I think makes for the perfect um, like grouping of photos for your listing. So the first is the product on a plain white background. You want to have that in there. Etsy allows you to have five different photos. So you want to take advantage of all of those. So, you know, have one on a plain white background. I think one to two photos of the product actually being used or being worn is really helpful because it gives customers an idea of exactly how to wear it or use it in their life. Um, I think you also want to have a photo of um, your packaging. If you have unique packaging, I think that just gets people really excited to purchase it. And then lastly, if you offer different options for your product. So a lot of times a product will come in different colors. So you want to have an image that shows customers exactly what their different options are. So, um, yeah, if you include all of those photos, I think you'll have the best chance of getting your product sold. Yeah, catching, them, catching the eye to, to draw them in straight away. Yes. Um, how do you attract people to purchase your products by a photograph alone when they can't try on or see other products um, themselves? I think that's kind of fairly simi similar to the last question, isn't it? Yes. Uh, I think you know, because they can't see it in person, that's where having plenty of photographs um, really will help you. I think a lot of times I see sellers and they just have one photo of the product and that's really not enough. You know, you wanna give them um, a lot of different photos from different angles, let them really see the product. And I think having a photo of the product being used helps with that as well, because then they get to, you know, get a better idea of like the texture of it and like how exactly they could use it in their life. Um, so yeah, just make sure you're taking plenty of pictures from plenty of angles, and I think that that will help a lot with that. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, this next question um, is a really interesting one, actually, and I think a lot of people do wonder about this. Can you sell something you have made if it, you are using a pattern that's not yours, or are there copyright laws on photos? Right, so the answer is it depends. <laughs> Um, usually when you see a, a pattern online, um, they will either link back to the original source of the pattern, or you might have to purchase the pattern. Um, just make sure that you read the, if you're purchasing a pattern, they always will include this information or they should, um, about the terms of use, 
So you just have to really make sure you read through that because there are some people who say you can sell this pattern, you can sell, I mean, sell the work that you made from this pattern um, as long as you link back to where you got it or as long as you give credit or you don't have to give credit at all. You're free to sell it, you know, as much as you want. And then some people say you can't sell it at all. So it really just depends on where you got the pattern and um, what their terms are. Yeah, I suppose it's just having respect for the designer of that pattern as well. I know a lot of people who say to me, can you do a tutorial on this particular um, pattern? And I'm like, well, you know that I don't own that pattern. It wasn't me that designed it. So I need permission beforehand. So it was just given that designer the respect um, and checking to make sure that you're okay to go ahead and sell those things. Yes, definitely. And you know, if you're unclear or if it's kind of like, it, you're not really sure one way or the other, just contact the person directly. Um, and when in doubt, just don't do it because you don't want to get in trouble with stuff like that. <laughs> no, you wouldn't want to. Um, so do I need social media to market my shop? I think in this day and age, that answer is yes. Um, but you don't need necessarily all social media networks, you know? So I think a lot of people get overwhelmed because they start reading, you know, oh, I gotta have a Facebook page, a Twitter account, Pinterest, Instagram, I've gotta have it all. And if you are limited with your time, just pick the network that makes the most sense for your business. So if you have a product that is really visual, obviously with most of you selling, you know, crochet, I think Instagram is a great place for that. Um, also Pinterest. So you know, if you have to pick one social media account, I would say Pinterest and Instagram would probably give you the best, um, the most bang for your buck. Uh, but, you know, you kind of have to just think about like what you have time for. And you certainly don't have to use all social media. It's better to be consistent on one account than it is to be kind of all over the place with all these different accounts. Yeah, I think sometimes it can really wear you thin if you're trying to focus on all these different things that uh, that's good advice stick to one keep it simple yes yes exactly and you have to think about too like you're selling something crochet products that's really like visual and beautiful and so you know do you need a twitter account for that probably not like because twitter's just text so you just think about like what would make your product shine the most and what you could maintain yeah and what are your views about having a blog to go along I think a blog is wonderful for showing just behind the scenes. Um, it gives, it humanizes your brand. You know what I mean? It, it gives people an idea more about you and your story. And so blogging is really great. Um, but I know that a lot of new sellers, they just don't have much time again. So blogging can take up a lot of time. If you don't think that you have the time to maintain a blog right now, then a good kind of like substitute for blogging right now is Instagram um, because you can make really long captions and you can sort of share the same type of content um, on directly on Instagram. The thing with Instagram to remember though is you wanna make sure that you're using hashtags so that people can find you when they're looking for um, you know, relevant pictures to what they're searching. So be sure to use the proper hashtags if you do go the Instagram route so that people can find you. Um, but yeah, back to the, back to blogging. I think if you have the time for that, you definitely should do it. I think it's a really great thing. It helps drive traffic to your shop. Um, it gives you more of a place to use like different types of photos that people could pin on Pinterest. So yeah, my answer is if you have the time, yes. If you don't have the time, just do Instagram. Absolutely. And just while we talk about Instagram, um, some people are like, well, what hashtags do I use? And I think uh, my personal advice would be go on pictures that you like and you enjoy looking at and see what kind of hashtags they're using. Um, and then usually you'll find a whole different load of hashtags that you can actually add to your own photos. Definitely. And Instagram even has a new thing now where if you search for a hashtag, it'll give you like a list of other hashtags that people are searching for at the same time. So yeah, there are lots of, I agree, look at, look at the pictures that you like and tag, you know, the same hashtags there. Um, this is a good question. Uh, what is the best marketing tool to invest my time into? Mm, okay, so 
this is one that people don't always think about, but the best really is email. So if you can get an email list for your customers or for even just people who are interested in, in one day being customers, um, that is the best. And here's why. It's because social media changes all the time, you know, and it's always changing. You never know. Things go, it, things are trendy one day and then they're not the next day. I mean, we all remember MySpace. No one's using that anymore. And, <laughs> and so um, email is going to be around. Email has stood the test of time. And if someone gives you their email address, then they're really interested and they're really engaged with what you're doing and they really want to know more. So I always recommend um, email if you only have the time to invest in one type of marketing. I think that for an online business, um, it's sort of like the best thing that you can invest in. It has the highest return on investment of any other uh, social media or any other like marketing tool that you can use. Um, so I use MailChimp for that. And that's kind of like one of the most popular ones. And I always recommend MailChimp to people because it's pretty easy to use and easy to get started. Um, and if you want to start gathering emails, just include um, your link to sign up for your emails in all of like the different sections of your shop that you can. So in your shop announcement, in your product descriptions, in your um, messages that are sent out once someone purchases something. So just start sharing those links and um, you'll get your email list built up in no time. And then you have this list of people who are really interested in your shop and what you're doing. And if there's something important that you want to tell them or a discount that you're having or a new like craft show that you're going to be at, you can address all those people at once and be sure that they're going to see it. Yeah. And you can actually get things like MailChimp um, on free accounts, can't you? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So MailChimp is is free um, for like the beginner package, which is all that you need in the beginning. So. And I think sort of um, having an um, um, email list, if you don't have time to blog, you can almost do like a monthly um, newsletter. Exactly. To blog, but just for the people who are wanting to, to see it. That's exactly right, yes. Okay, so what packaging materials do I need to include when I ship my orders out? Okay, so for packaging, um, it obviously it will depend on like exactly what you're selling. Um, but I always have, I recommend, you know, certain types of packaging. So the first thing that you're going to need is I call it like inner packaging. So this is kind of like the pretty packaging. Like if your product was sold at a store, this is the packaging that you would see it on, on the shelf. Um, so for crochet products, that might be something like, um, pretty tissue paper or like ribbons and just things that make the item look really nice and like a gift. Um, and then from there, you'll need packaging protection. So depending on what exactly you're selling, that might mean like extra paper to kind of keep it um, padded in the, in the package. Because since you're shipping all of your orders, um, the post, post office does tend to kind of like, you know, throw these packages around. So you want to make sure that they're safe in there. Um, so like for some people that's bubble wrap, for some people that's extra tissue paper, different types of like packing paper. Um, and then you want to have like a nice, obviously shipping box for the outside of the package. So you can get those, if you're in the U S you can get those, um, through the post office for free. You can get like the flat rate boxes. Um, if not, you can go to places like the boxery.com and they sell a lot of, um, you know, just nice looking boxes. And then the last part of your packaging materials that you'll need is marketing materials. So things like a business card or some type of note card that you're going to include in your packages, um, stickers for the outside of your box, just things like that to make it more branded and more like specific for you. Another, another good thing that I like to do for like branding materials is get stamps. Um, you can get stamps that have your logo on them. I go to a site called rubberstamps.net and um, it's affordable and you can just get these stamps that you can just stamp on all of your orders and just little things like that that make it more branded and more like matching the brand of your shop. Yeah, and I think if people are doing these um, handmade items, um, it's really nice. I love it if ever I receive something and I have a handwritten note. Yes, definitely. That definitely enhances your customer experience and makes it more 
personal and, and really that's why people are shopping on Etsy. They want that handmade aspect. They want to know that like a real person made this. It wasn't made by a machine in a factory. Um, so definitely adding a little handwritten note is it can definitely like enhance that whole ordering experience and get you repeat customers down the road. So yeah, and that's that's exactly what you're aiming for, isn't it? For people to say, oh, I got it from this place and then somebody else buys and that's what that's what creates your business at the end of the day. Definitely. Well, I, that's all the questions we have for now, Holly. Um, I've certainly learned a lot from that. Oh, um, good. Thank you for answering those for us. Um, you've actually got an e-course, haven't you? On your I do. So I just launched a course called Craft Biz 101. Um, I think we'll put a link in the description box to that. But um, yeah, it's a course that takes you step by step through the process of opening an Etsy shop from planning out you know, your business plan to how to create a cohesive product line um, to creating your own branding, all of the things that go into starting a shop and doing it the right way. So if you've been trying to sell on Etsy for a little while and you're not really sure like why you're not seeing sales and you wanna kind of start fresh, this would be a good course for you or if you've never sold on Etsy at all and you're just getting started for the first time. Um, it, it will definitely be helpful for you. And this is advice and info that I desperately wish I would have had when I opened my shop three years ago. Um, so I tried to just include like all of the things that I struggled with and that I thought would be really helpful for people. Yeah, it sounds fantastic. I think I should be uh, checking that out. Great. Well, thank you so much for stopping by and having a little chat. If anybody else has any questions that they want to ask, just leave uh, your comments in the comment section below and we'll get back to as many people as we can um, but until next time thank you Holly thank you so much for having me and I shall see you guys again soon bye bye